Fall Trades, and this is the Sunday Book Circle for The Incendiaries by R.O. Kwan. The Incendiaries is a novel from the perspective of one young Korean-American man, Will, who also imagines the perspective of a young Korean-American woman he knows, Phoebe, and a slightly older man, John Wheel. This is an interesting choice, as I don't think many readers remember in the other two perspectives that they are not direct, but filtered through Will's imagination. It's easy to get lost in the idea that this is what really happened for them. I think it is very close to the reality, but I also think that some of it can't be trusted. I got to meet Quan at another first fiction at First Draft at Changing Hands, and that was pretty awesome. It is clear from what she said there that this book was very personal since she had been religious herself and also lost her faith like her main character, Will. It is also about his college girlfriend, Phoebe, and her falling in with a religious cult led by a man named John Wheel. Quan's writing style for this novel feels very summary based, but considering that all of it is from Will's point of view, including the Phoebe and John Wheel scenes, that actually makes a lot of sense. At times, though, she still manages to inject a poetical style in a natural way, and those moments are both strong and vivid. Some people feel that Will and Phoebe are a little flat because they only seem to be their various psychological issues. But again, since Will is telling the story, we don't see everything about them. Will is presenting himself and Phoebe as he thinks of the two of them and tries to avoid subjects that don't fit the narrative he's trying to shape but some of it still leaks through. There was some implied partying going on in white spaces. But Phoebe and Will were both very messed up. Both were suffering and not working on their grief. Part of the reason that most of the novel has the grief buried is again because Will is telling the story and doesn't want to acknowledge his own grief. Phoebe tried parties, one night stands, and then religion as her coping mechanisms. I believe the real turning point for her and absolutely foreshadowing of what was going to happen to Phoebe was the episode with the drug dealer. Like John Wheel, he is older, lives around campus, and sells a kind of salvation to the college kids. He also lures Phoebe into a vulnerable position and then uses her in a way that is dangerous, violent, and repugnant. This was actually one of the most important moments of the book and is very brief. Phoebe doesn't bring it up again, and neither does Will. But we have to imagine that the reality is that this was traumatizing. How could it not be? How could it not affect how Phoebe thought of herself? How could it not affect her sense of self-worth and her sense of morality in the world? So she turns to religion a place where morality is supposed to be cut and dried. There's the idea that religion has answers. People know how to move through the world with religion in their minds because it tells them what is right and what is wrong and has such a large backing and so many years of existing. I'm an atheist, but I understand that religion gives people purpose and direction. I don't believe purpose and direction can only be found in religion, however. I just think that religion comes with a ready-made community and pre-made answers that some people find easier to hold on to that the difficult ways of finding purpose and direction through self-reflection don't have. Self-reflection doesn't come with a ready-made community or pre-made answers. And sometimes the answers one gets from self-reflection aren't pretty. While Phoebe doesn't join a real religion but a cultish sect of a religion, the theory that what turns a cult into a religion is time holds pretty close to truth when one considers that many of the attributes of religion are just watered-down versions of their earlier cultish attributes. Will isn't able to believe in the pre-made answers of his religion anymore, but I wouldn't say that he's ready for self-reflection either. In fact, he kind of avoids it like it might kill him. Why? Well, let's jump to spoilers. It becomes clear, gradually, and despite Will trying to hold it back, that Will isn't a good person. This is most clear when he follows the young woman in China. This scene is, at first, harmless, but becomes more horrifying as Will violates more and more boundaries, crossing line after line of what is acceptable, to the point of chasing a scared woman through the city. There were other signs earlier, but this is the moment when it is clear that Will could be a dangerous person. So when he starts drinking too much when alone, it is not surprising. When he rapes Phoebe, 
it is not surprising. Nor does it seem out of character. The idea that at times Will is likable and even right make Will so much more real. Will is no mustache-twirling villain. He's too authentic for that. It is interesting to note that at the beginning of the book, Will is haunted by his loss of faith, and at the end of the novel, he is haunted by Phoebe. Not really. It's a psychological haunting, not a real ghostly haunting. It's not her doing at all. It's all his problem. Will doesn't heal at all in this novel, and instead hurts people around him and becomes an alcoholic. It's nearly impossible to be on his side by the end of the incendiaries. And I wasn't. I felt worse for Phoebe than him. I didn't blame him for blowing up the clinics and killing the young women. No, Phoebe and the cult still did that, still chose to do it. But I do condemn Will for raping her. It could be argued that the reason Phoebe doesn't report the rape is because of their friend who also claimed to be sexually assaulted was not believed by the majority of people. Phoebe used to be promiscuous, so it is reasonable to assume that she decided, like Lysol, her accusation wouldn't be believed. Like Lysol, this pushes her further into self-destructive behavior. This doesn't change the fact, however, that she still decided to take part in the bombings. And I don't know if she lived or died. Not for sure. I think it could go either way, but if I was pressed to guess, I would think Phoebe died. I think the point is that Phoebe's grief and guilt over the loss of her identity as a pianist and the death of her mother, which only happened because of her grief about her sense of self, Will's alcoholism and violation, and John Wheel's control and use of her all destroyed Phoebe. I believe the point was to show how these people, these violent people, are created. Because what drives someone to blow up a building? What drives someone to extremes? Pain, suffering, violence, and predators. That's why Phoebe's story is a tragedy. That's why when I think of this book, I think of sadness. Why put all this through Will's perspective? I think it works in two ways. One, it creates a dynamic way of telling a story. And two, it shows that even the people closest to someone like this are part of the problem and actually don't know the person as well as they'd like to think they do. They weren't there for them in the ways that count. That's how this kind of radicalism can flourish without anyone doing anything about it. And in fact, feeding it. Will wants the story to be about himself, but it really isn't, even when he's the one telling it. The story is still really about Phoebe. Let me know in the comments what you think about the ending. Overall, I liked this book. I think you should read it if you haven't. If you have, let me know what you think of Will, of Phoebe, of John Wheel, down in the comments. What did you think of the prose and the narrative device of being told the story from Will's perspective only? Do you think what happened to Phoebe was Will's fault? Or was it John Will's fault? Or was it her own fault? And please, mark all spoilers. Would you like to see what I'm currently reading? Follow me on goodreads.com slash outsfalltrades to see what I'm reading right now and what book reviews you can expect in the future. I've made a Discord. I'm on it all the time and you're all invited to chat with me. There are channels for video games, movies, TV shows, books, and writing. Even a place for you to promote your own things. Join me there. Everyone is welcome. This has been the Sunday Book Circle, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe, click that bell, leave a comment below, visit my blog at empatheticwriter.wordpress.com, and follow me on Patreon for exclusive content and a shout out on a video. Merch, 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 yeah! Check out my new shop at cafepress.com slash alexvaltrades for all kinds of products with my face on them.